majority of cases, we need more than one bit to perform our computation. For quantum computing, it is also true. So, in this lecture, we are going to learn the mathematical description of systems with multiple qubits. Uh, so, here uh, you see a table for... Now, imagine that we have two particles, each carrying one qubit, and in this table we have uh, the possible measurement outcomes for these two qubits in our ordinary basis, 0, 1. And we have four possibilities of such measurement here. Uh, now, it is convenient for us to describe this system, to describe these measurement outcomes, again, in some Hilbert space, in some linear space over the complex numbers. But since we have four different measurement outcomes here, this space has to be four-dimensional. And each measurement outcome will be, again, uh, one of the basis vectors of this space. So, let's name these vectors. This measurement outcome we will call 0, 0. This 0, 1. This 1, 0. And this 1, 1. So, we just have named uh, four basis vectors of the space in which we will describe the system with two qubits. Good. Now, imagine that one of the qubits have this superposition before the measurement. Can we describe this state before the measurement in the space we just constructed? Yes, we can. We can uh, describe it like this. So, we used two of the vectors we just introduced in the previous slide to describe the state of this system. And this system is still in the superposition state, so we can measure it, and the probabilities of the measurement outcomes are still the same. So it's alpha squared for the measurement outcome 0, 0, and beta squared is the measurement outcome for 0, 1, since um, measurement of the first qubit always gives us zero, and only measurement of the second qubit is probabilistic for us. And again, the sum of the coefficients um, before the vectors, the basis vectors in the state, gives us one. So it is a, a unitary vector. Now, let's consider a more complicated situation when uh, both qubits are in some superposition. And we still can uh, describe this state in our newly constructed space like this. And it's easy to show that the uh, sum of squares of all the coefficients here gives us 1, so it is again a unitary vector. And, um, for any state, for example, this one, the probability of obtaining this state after the measurement is alpha delta squared. So, uh, we have everything we got used to in the case of one qubit. And this is true because we believe that measurement of two different particles are independent events, so uh, we can multiply the probabilities. We have alpha squared for obtaining this zero, and we have delta squared for obtaining this one. So the probability of zero, one is alpha squared multiplied by delta squared. Okay. Now, uh, the interesting part is um, we just uh, constructed 
the description of uh, two particles, uh, of the state of two particles, like we just did. Uh, but the amazing part is that we cannot construct the whole space like this. Because there are vectors in this four-dimensional space, for example, this one. which cannot be constructed through this process, just as uh, I just described. But physically, this state, which is described like this, can exist in, on two separate particles. We will return to this fact very soon. Now, uh, it's a uh, very common misunderstanding about all this. The real quantum systems, the qubits, they don't situate in some Hilbert spaces, and if we take two of them, they don't initiate some tensor product of these spaces. It is our way of describing them. It is our choice. We decide to describe it as um, some vectors in Hilbert spaces, and, in, and it is convenient for us to describe two qubits in a space of four dimensions. Uh, we already named our buzzes. Now we have to show how um, we enumerate it. Um, we have to decide which column vectors will represent these buzzes. You remember that we have um, this one zero column for the vector zero and this zero, one column for the vector one. And um, now we have to choose uh, for each basis vector of our newly constructed space, which column vectors represent it. And there are many rules uh, we can uh, use for this. And uh, the most basic rule for us will be the following. We just take the two vectors, this one is zero and this one is zero, so they form this vector zero, zero, and we take a tensor product of this vector, so the Kronecker product. So we have here one multiplied by one zero and zero multiplied by one zero. This is our tensor which is 1, 0, 0, 0 tensor. And we can uh, substitute it with the vector in four-dimensional space like this. We just remove these brackets inside of the tensor. So this is the way how we are going to construct the cones for our newly defined buzzes. For example, if you have vector 0, 1, we will have to do the same thing. So 0 is 1, 0 vector multiplied by 0, 1, which is vector 1. And it is again, we take this 1 and multiply it by the whole vector here. So it's 0, 1. Now we take this 0 and multiply it again by this vector. So um, this gives us this tensor, which we can uh, naturally map to this four-dimensional vector. And of course, we can perform this uh, this rule. Uh, we can apply this rule to all the basis vectors, and we obtain this table. Uh, we can choose other rules to enumerate our vectors, but this rule is very convenient because um, if you you may have already noticed that if we use the binary notation here, so we look at this as some numbers, 
this 0, 0 is 0 in binary notation, this is 1 in binary notation, this is 2, and this is 3. So it's numbers of our vectors. And uh, here, when we have this 0, we have 1 on the first place. When we have 1, we have 1 on the second place. Here we have 1 on the third place and on the fourth place. So the position of this uh, single 1 in the column, it, um, it is defined by the number of the vector, which, can, we, which we can read from its name in binary notation. So this is why this rule um, is very convenient. Now, uh, if you consider, for example, um, the state of three qubits like this, and um, this is this uh, state will be represented by a vector in uh, eight dimensional space. So it is it will be a column with eight coordinates in it. We can see that uh, this number is five in binary notation, so we can easily understand that this single one will be on position six in the vector. And all other will be zeros. Okay. Uh, so, of course, for the systems with multiple qubits, with more qubits than two, uh, than two, if you have, for example, n qubits, you'll have vectors in the spaces with number of dimensions two in the power n. So, for n equal to one, we have this one qubit, which is the vector in the space with two dimensions, with n equal to 2, we have four dimensions, dimensions, and equal to 3, we have 8, and is 10, we have 1024, and if we have like 1000 particles, we have this enormous number of dimensions. So it's like 1024 in the power 100, which is approximately this number. So the state of the system with only 1,000 particles is described by this number of complex numbers. This is why Richard Feynman was uh, so optimistic about quantum computing. Uh, but you may argue that if you take only 1,000 of flipping coins, then the number of outcomes of um, reading these coins um, will be the same. It, it will also be this number of outcomes. But for some reason, nobody builds a computer on these flipping coins. In the next lecture, we are going to understand why.